This is the 20th season of Bass Talk Live. BTL is presented by Bass Cat Boats, Strike King Lures, Aftco, Pro Guide Batteries, Spro, Gamakatsu, The Bass Tank, Denali Rods, Beatdown Outdoors, and Sunline. BTL, coming at you. Good morning, and welcome to another exciting edition of BTL Bass Talk Live, where we are going to talk about bass fishing. It is, uh, we'll just call it championship week now. We have Red Crest kicking off in two days on Lay Lake, and then the practice for the Bassmaster Classic kicks off. Well, let's just ask our in-studio guest, Kyle Patrick, Elite Series rookie, uh, top 20 in the AOI standings after two events, and you flew into town, you won the last last open or next to last o- next to last open on uh, lake of the ozarks last year and as a result you're competing in the 2024 bassmaster classic on grand lake so thanks for taking time to stop by the btl studio today yeah man it's uh talking to the mic yeah it's uh, sorry. sorry you can everyone. like pull it towards you so you don't have <laughs> um, to like lean in no yeah it's it's uh really cool to be here obviously i've watched the show for a long time so coming into this room it was very nostalgic setup and just being here is is um neat for me you know um oh, cool. but yeah and you know to top it off headed to the classics practice starts friday yeah. um so you know a lot of a lot of new things for me what is the do you know off the top of your head the classic practice schedule because every year it's it's way so everyone sees final day super six come in they do the video the smoke and they're like okay that's cool that guy won 300 grand yeah but what a lot of people i think don't realize about the Bassmaster classic is you guys are used to rolling in town you practice two and a half days uh well you've only had two tournaments like that you practice two and a half to four days (laughs) then you fish for two three or four days you're done it's a nice six day package you're out of there you're on to the next one break down a little bit on how classic week is because yeah. it is an absolute grinder dude I, it's so complicated that i still don't have here's what i know okay, okay. I'll, I'll tell you what i know friday is a full day of practice right like and this, we're still this, a week this yeah, friday yeah. we're still friday is one week so that would be march um <laughs> wait what is it? oh yeah march 15th yeah. Is your first day of official yep. practice and the classic starts on March 22nd. Yeah. Okay. So Friday is the first day of, of where we can be on grand since January 1st. Okay. So we, you know, they cut it off. Um, Saturday and Sunday, those Friday, Saturday, Sunday of this week is you can be on the water, sun up, sundown. Okay. And then um, Monday, there are things going on that I don't quite know yet. Like, you know, I have the schedule. There's just, yeah. dude, they give you a schedule and it is jam packed. Yeah. Like every minute of every, every day there, every minute you are doing something 100% that you don't know off time. Uh, media, right? photos. media photos, um, you know, maybe a walkthrough thing, yeah. whether it be for, you know, um, like the day of the classic or like how this is going to work. And there's so much going on. So, that's Monday, Tuesday. Um, I believe Wednesday is a fit. Like w- we get one more day of practice, and that's where they do like the run through the national anthem. You'll have like, you can't have an observer. You yep. fish a normal day. So I remember back in, but it's not a practice day. It would be like an like literally... it's your official practice day, right? Your one official. Because I remember when Casey Ashley won the classic on Hartwell, he had to be in the penalty box. Uh, before he was able to take off on day one of the classic because his time on his graph was wrong. This was on a practice day and he came on day. his official one practice day. Cause you have your three days of yep. practice and then your official and he came in late yep. on his official practice day. So he had to sit in the penalty box wow. before he could take off on day one. He still won the damn thing. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I, uh, yeah. So I believe it's like you have to, you know, you, you launch at the, same time you're gonna launch yeah. on day one everything's the exact so dry same. run yep dry run um and then i believe the night of the champions is thursday i want to say and you have media day in there media day is thursday and then yep. the night of the champions is, is after, that night is that night yep. i believe 
um there's been so much because you know remember like being you know i have family coming friends mm -hmm. so i'm trying to like there's some coordinating that goes on like it's a lot of uh it's it's a lot of planning um you know and i've done some planning for you know some of my sponsors with their booths like i've kind of helped them you don't want to ever see the expo that's your goal yeah hopefully no expo no expo um but yeah no it's it's a it's a lot to take in and also a childhood dream obviously to, yeah. to fish the classic so so uh, you haven't ex experienced it. have you been to classics though like have you watched weigh-ins have you dude i am the biggest fan of this sport like i said I, like all the history i care about it probably more than i should in some mm -hmm. situations right um i have never been to a bassmaster classic <laughs> and three years ago i was gonna go mm -hmm. right but then i had a wedding and then i had the next year i had another wedding it's like why you know I don't what do weddings what that's why i don't do weddings right so i was like you know what maybe i won't go to a classic until i'm fishing one and then it happened and so it just happened to be so are you glad that you've done it or now do you wish that you had kind of seen what it was so you would maybe not yeah. be as in awe so to speak yeah because i think that's part of why it's so difficult for someone to win that hasn't been to a classic or fished in a classic before because there's so much going on yeah. there's so much coming at you media and and the attention and just all of the like the change in practice it's it's a lot to you know overcome to then win a three-day tournament against the best anglers in the world yeah. i feel like so yes when i was driving um or actually yeah when i was driving here or fl i flew in here yeah. um i was thinking to myself i i would have liked to see how everything lays out and like all that but we're still gonna give it give it hell uh so then you hear some people that say man uh, you know I'm going to get my feet under myself. I'm going to enjoy the classic. I'm going to enjoy the night of champions. I'm going to do all that. Have you struggled or thought about how you're going to, uh, it kind of handle the experience versus the performance aspect of it? Yeah. I, like I said, I, I've never had, I don't even, I can't even really imagine all I'm focusing on right now is the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. So I plan to do it in, I plan to attack the classic. Let's call it. I plan to attack it in segments. So I'm going to have three days of grinding, right? Yeah. And, and that's what I'm focusing on right now. Like I could care less about any of the media right now. I want three days of good practice. Um, and I'm going to do it a little bit differently because we have that time in between. Yeah. It, it, you have to practice a little bit differently. And I think that's that can make or break a classic is how you practice. Because it's like I said, like, you know, everyone knows it's a week before we actually start um and then you know i'm gonna try to enjoy because i actually like you know talking with people and you know teaching people about you know baits or you know certain things and doing media i i do enjoy that a lot of people don't maybe it's because i'm still very young in my career i think i really like you know exploring our, our industry you know and i through media i feel like it, it, it's something i enjoy right um, so I'm going to take that in a segment and then that official practice day is, you know, the last sort of like, that's step three, it would be, you know, where I'm fully locked in, not thinking about anything else. And then after that, the night of champions is going to be challenging for me. Why is that? Because I'm going to be thinking about fishing and, and um, it's going to be hard for me to enjoy the night of champions because I feel like I'm, my mind's going to be, they do have an open bar at night of champions. <sighs> Dude, I just don't know if I can take advantage of it the way I would want to, because maybe I'll have a couple just to, you know, ease the nerves, but I'm going to be super. You going suit, tux? G yeah. Like, what are we I'll going? Go, I'll go suit. Okay. Full suit. That's impressive. I yep. feel like that. Uh, so I went to the night of champions in 1998. Okay. Because I got invited for casting kids. Yep. And then I also was there like when we filmed the documentary called the 49th classic uh but other than that like you just get to see everybody i think in 98 that was a black tie affair so like i rented a tux for that yep. my parents were there i was 14 years old 13 <laughs> years awesome. old uh and everyone else wore a tux it's kind of like 
dressed down a little bit now. Yeah. I think it needs to go back to the black tie, I, dude, I the tux, like, the three piece yeah. suit, that type of thing. Like, I mean, it's the one night. It's the one, one night, night a year. Anyone in fishing, it's the one night that you need to look good. Like, you know, not wearing, you know, an Afco samurai or whatever, yeah. like and shorts and baggy yeah. shorts. Like, you know, I just think that I owe it to the sport, right? The Like the history behind it. Because remember, it, I, I don't know, probably a lot of viewers remember, like you couldn't have your wives. Like it used to be very strict, the classic, how it was laid out. So I feel like the least I can do is, you know, wear a suit, you know, white button down, nice tie, nice shoes, belt, you know, like everything yeah. is like nice. I feel like, I, you know, I can't show up my rookie or my first classic and look like a <laughs> maybe i mean i don't know i just feel like that that's that's my personal opinion so are you like do you already know are you like one of the last boats out on day one since you were an open winner probably uh actually i think it's randomized okay now that i think about it i think i'll have to check my email i got a lot of emails i need to go over really? um do you yeah. take care of all this yourself or do you have like people that help you like you're no i do it all and and pr i probably annoy I'm probably the most annoying to deal like Bassmaster's probably like, oh, Kyle sent us another email because I'm always like making oh, sure me, that I'm, I'm always calling. Him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like Ronnie Moore, dude, like he must. He's just probably like, dude, Kyle just has to stop texting me um, I, because I, I want to make sure I'm doing everything right. Like yeah. I, I am a big proponent. Like I, I want to be I'm a rule follower. I am. I want to make sure I'm not doing anything wrong or stepping out of line. And, you know, that's how I feel like I do it best is like making sure I'm crossing all my T's and dotting my I's. Uh, verbs to describe your excited in, intimidated, indifferent, anticipate. Like what what would you describe your feelings? Because, you know, I, there might be a couple people listening who may be qualified for a classic through a Bass Nation or guys who right. are listed in who have fished classics before. but for the rest of us, like, we we have not experienced that feeling of being like, you know, hey, we're we're going into the Bassmaster yeah. Classic. So, what does that feel like, like right now? Plus, you're a little bit of an excitable guy. Yeah, so. just a little bit. Uh, yeah. So, what's weird was when I won Ozarks, I was so stressed about Harris Chain that I didn't get to experience like I'm going to the Classic. Right. Okay. Like I knew that I was in, and I knew that I just won. But I was so worried about making the elite series that it didn't I didn't like allow it to hit me. OK, right. When I'm qualified for the elites, every so often I'll be driving down the road and I'll just like start like freaking out. I'll be like, let's go, dude. Like I'm in the classic. Like I'll just call my buddy and we'll just talk about that. I'm in the classic and how crazy it is. Right. Yeah. Um, so I've gotten a lot of that out the, over the pen. And then, you know, after fork. When I when I had a really, you know, really good derby, got a century belt, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, I knew that like the classic was the next derby. So I really got excited. Right. Yeah. I, I'm stoked to fish in the classic. Uh, Dave Mercer just texted me. He said night of champions is Wednesday night, not Thursday. Shoot. Yeah. See, you, you I knew reading those emails you should be texting Ronnie more and more. Dude. I look, you put me on the spot. I, I, I have it all. Well, no, I just wanted to give the right, people no, an I idea know. of, I mean, like, so look, we're it, like the next seven days it's there's a lot of stuff on the plate but yeah. it's also cool because it yeah. is the bass master classic i don't think you'd want it i don't think you would want it any other way no, i don't that, think you would want it 100%. to feel comfortable would want nope. it to feel familiar no nope. because i know there's some guys you know guys who have won it who are like man it's the once a year thing i take it all in i take it in stride it's out of my routine and then you have other guys who like skip the night of champions mm -mm. and avoid everything yeah. and, don't, and stay at a different place and don't want anything because they want to keep it like the routine yeah. i think that's got to be just an individual yeah. basis yeah i'm not that guy i'm gonna be doing everything i can you know pete robbins has already reached out he's like hey can i maybe ride along do media for one of the days okay like, cool i got know. pete on uh tuesday the 19th just before the classic okay, we're gonna preview cool. grand and talk about some stuff cool so. yeah pete knew me when i was like when i first ever started like my first bass master event as a co-angler i knew pete way before how'd you and, meet him so because you're both east coast yeah um pete Pete, so I went to on a trip. So the way I got into, I marshaled all the elites and fished. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. When I, did you mark? What, what year did you marshal? Well, this will be 20, a roundabout story, but if you say, yeah, I mean, 2021, three um, years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
20 i think it was 2021 yeah so yeah 2021 i fished the centrals as a boat as a voter okay pro and then i marshaled all the elites and fished six of the opens as a co okay so and it was all paid for because pete one of a mutual friend of pete and i he his name's paul pagnano he'll be at the classic oh yeah he used to have the bk racing team yep you got it. You know, dude, in the you BK know fishing yeah, team yeah. with Kirk. So, yeah, and... he is independently wealthy. Um, yeah, he does a lot of stuff behind the scenes in the yeah, industry. Yeah, good he, dude. He, yeah, good dude. Uh, and he sort of took me under his wing and was like, "Hey, like, you know, you seem like you have it." Yeah. Right. And I and I so you know I drove his truck and boat to every tournament, uh, every open event. Uh, the BK fishing team boat. Uh, no, was that, it after? That was at after this time. This. It was yeah. Okay. That was after. And, you know, he introduced me to Gerald, John Cruz, uh, Chad Morgan Taylor. He tried to, yep. like, get me involved. Right. And that's how I sort of have progressed. OK. And that was a huge help. But anyway. Um, Back to how, yeah. you, how we ended up meeting Pete. Oh, so you just met Pete through that process. Yep. Through that process. And at El Salto, because Paul was like, hey, you want to come uh, to El Salto? Okay. I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I met Pete. So and, you did the Anglers in thing with him yep, and Hannah and yep, went down there. Yeah. All right. And uh, I got to get on that. So I'm with uh, I work with uh, Pro Bass Adventures. Yeah. Uh, and they that. have a uh, lodge in El Salto. And we we have a, uh, a BTL trip booked for December. OK. Uh, honestly, the first three events, my schedule has been absolutely insane. You can see it up there. I've, I've like haven't been home at all. Um, so I will have more details on that. He's at the from Pro Bass Adventures is actually going to be at the uh Bassmaster Classic. So I'm gonna meet with him. And then I think we have like eight or nine spots open for that and a potential for another 15 spots the week before. So wow. I mean my goal is to spend 11 days down on yeah. El Salto and then like at, at night like we all come in and do like the BTL stuff. Yeah have like a big bass pod dude, every night and dude. stuff like that. God I love fishing. It's so cool. I love fishing on El Salto. I can yeah, tell you that. Yeah. Like, I mean, Salto, dude, it's 30 like, pounds every day. I, well, I went down there and uh like dude i grind right yeah so i'm not a freak show artist like that's what right. hallman used to always say to me was like dude you gotta learn how to freak show and i was like well you, if you don't freak show you zero right. which i proved this past weekend at uh five and zero <laughs> but at santee because i knew you'd have to freak show but uh right. you go down there and I, I mean after like a day i just looked at my buddy darren and i was like dude i needed this like yeah. i needed a deal where like you cast you get a bite and you jack on a a hundred fish a day and you <laughs> yeah. catch 25 to six pounders a day. Yep. And you know, I caught a nine and eight, a couple sevens. It was like good for my ego and my soul to yep. be like, okay, this is how bass can behave <laughs> yeah. and how aggressive they are. In Maybe we're giving them too much credit. So anyway, that's a cool story on how you met Pete. Yeah. And he, and I told him then I said, I'm going to make the elite series. And he was like, he wrote an article about it on bass Aster, And he was like, honestly, I looked at him and I thought zero chance zero chance because i was just mm -hmm. like you know some another kid right that just said that so it's it's a cool progression of, of our relationship right like yeah. he you know i told him that and then we would talk occasionally and now like you know he writes uh you know some articles for me like not for me but yeah, about he's, me he's, yeah. he's he's incredible. almost all the ghost writing that you see and a ton of articles pete yep. does that for a ton of different angles In he does Fisherman, a bunch behind Bass the scenes Master. uh their website him and hannah run it is called half past first cast.com they do a bunch of really cool uh adventure trips yep. and you know he's a he's like a government lawyer yeah or he does something like that yeah. but he's worked it to where he's he gets smarter than you and off. i yeah no he's very smart um <laughs> I, I sorry to assume that he's smarter than you, but I know no, he's, he's smarter than me. He's way smarter than me. <laughs> uh, hold on, I got a text with dude here. Uh, we have a so do you call Cranford Pig? Cranford, yeah, that's his nickname. That's what everyone around here calls him. No, but yeah. I'm gonna start. I now. mean, you've seen his truck and boat yeah, and how he is. He, he everyone calls him Pig. So, anyway, uh, your buddies with Cranford, you had your boat at his house, Austin Cranford yeah doing well in the open so you and him are going to jump in a boat and then me yep. and kevin would do the old heads now former <laughs> oh elite series gosh. pro uh we got to bounce after this because we have a long drive to get to this lake we're going to but uh we're going to jump in and have a a 2v2 oh yeah and maybe put a couple what is it called a greenback couple greenbacks some oleans franklin's on it yep, and then I need, to, I need to add to the uh <laughs> i need to add to the to the dollar autograph yeah that is cool so right anyway there. he's 
sitting outside. I said, just oh, come cool. in the house. So. Okay. No, that's cool. It's it's amazing in this sport to me. Like you mentioned, uh, Paul Pagnotta, which I, I don't know him personally. I just know him yeah. through other people. Yep. And then you mentioned yep. Pete and all that. It's amazing. You're talking a billion dollar industry. You're going to go to the classic. If you, you go to the classic expo, there's literally tens of thousands of people around. But it's like two degrees of separation, not six degrees. Everybody knows yeah. somebody who knows you, which I think you're aware of because of how you're trying to start your career on the right foot, yep. make connections, do yep. the right thing. I mean, that's got to be, I know that's something that not a lot of rookies realize early in their they career don't. is how small interactions Matter. in the present can impact major decisions five, 10 years down the road. And major you know income like because for you know for you for a lot of people in the industry it's not guaranteed income every year mm -hmm. right and so small interactions like people don't realize how important a bar conversation at icast or um you know a, a like stopping someone walking through the classic right those little things matter more than winning a tournament or you know you know, uh, posting on social media, and winning right? the tournaments. Fairly I'm, right. I'm just, I, I'm making a point. Like the, but my point, <laughs> <laughs> look, I mean, like I'm sure Trey has done pretty high yeah, yeah. in like I, career making, development. <laughs> I'm making a point though. Like those things, those small interactions matter so much because like you said, it's a two degree separation. Mm -hmm. And, um, the guy that you think does not matter, to, uh, like, you know, he's not wearing any brands. Mm -hmm. He's just walking down the middle of the eye cast. Like he could be massively influential. Yeah. And so you got to treat everyone. I mean, this is you know basics, but like yeah. you got to treat everyone like, you know, like they're important. like you'd like to be treated. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's basic stuff. And I don't think people do that a lot. I try to. So uh, we're not going to obviously dive into uh, grand very much, but uh I want to talk a little bit about it, then we'll take a first break, and then we'll come back uh, on a Wednesday. Did you come down and pre-practice and put in time? Like I know in December, I saw especially a lot of the rookies like move down here for like yeah. a month, oh, like, no, no. every single day on the water. Like I heard one of them like skipped Christmas, yeah, right? and Thanksgiving, yeah, so they could spend <laughs> every single day on the water. Like, is is that an accurate look, statement? Like, yeah, that is. Okay, I, so I, that I, wasn't an urban legend, dude. No, I look. I, I'm not blaming anyone for doing it. Yeah, right. If you can do it, yeah. sure, whatever. I, I have a family. Mm -hmm. I don't have kids, but I have a girlfriend that I've been with for six years. Um, lovely, by the way, Caroline. Um, well done. And. <laughs> And uh, uh, my parents, my yeah. sister, like I have to be, I ha I try to put everything I can into fishing, but I also, you know, so to answer your question, I was here for I four days um, because it's the Bassmaster Classic. And I felt mm -hmm. like, you know what, I'm going to drive down. I hit Fork for, or no, I'm sorry, I hit Toledo Bend for about four hours because when I came down here, it was blowing 40 miles an hour and Lovely. 35 degrees. So I barely got any practice time in there didn't matter i just you know was on my way mm -hmm. um and then fork i spent like six eight hours on did a day um and then i went to the to grand because i was like i just want to idle around um i want to just get a feel for this place um and you know i wanted to throw my jig i wanted to you know uh just mess around and really more you know drive the whole lake and idle some areas and look around so yes I, I was here for four days um and there were people here for 30. does that help i don't know i don't know but i feel confident in my you know four days here mm -hmm. and i think yeah i just don't know if that much longer would have helped me that much grand is not a mystery lake it's right. not like the first time who's ever been here. Right. It's the first time in this era, let's just call it an era, uh, that there's been a major tournament on Grand. But are you going into it with, and don't go into like how no, you yeah. plan, but are you going into it with like, this is 
what I hope develops. This is how I plan on catching them. Are you envisioning catching fish a certain way in a certain particular type of the lake? Or are you putting the boat in and trying to wipe the slate as clean as possible and then just fish the conditions for what you think the classic will be? Because it's a weird weather year this year. Yeah. too. It's like really, really weird weather year this year. I like that it's warm. Okay. I'll say that. I like that it's warm. I did not want it to be, you know, uh, an off the solely offshore deal. Like I want to, I want to have to mix. I think I do best when I can do both and they're kind of split. Mm -hmm. Like I want the fish to be wanting to get shallow, but still have somewhat of a population out here, mm -hmm. but then also have a solid population in, um, because I want to be able to have like spots where I can bounce. Like I, I, I feel like I do best when I can, you know, have two or three zones that I can bounce in between and that are very different. Mm -hmm. Right. Because then I feel like I can expand more throughout a tournament. And I think you have to do that in the classic because everyone's swinging for the fence in from my understanding, right? Like you're not trying to get a top 10 for points, yeah. right? It Everyone, you got to catch them so good every day. And so I want to, after, you know, the day one of the classic, I envision, you know, really dialing in three zones, but I want them to be, like I said, two, two out of the three or one out of the three needs to be very different so that I can potentially, you know, use that to, to progress throughout the next two days. A lot of young guys, rookies, open winners that are coming into this thing with a lot of momentum after the first two events, uh, tra traditionally, uh, classic favorites have done very well i mentioned uh casey ashley edwin evers uh on gray and the yeah. list kind of goes on and on uh do you still feel like there is a uh, uh oh let's just face it jason chris is the best there's ever been on grand yep. probably the best there ever will be on grand that's a fact the the dude is dialed in he just made a public post on his instagram that he's super excited that his finesse spinning rods came in and it blew my mind that we're in mid March on grand and Jason Christie is pumped that his spinning rods came in. Do you think that there is even a home lake local advantage or at this point, after what you've seen in the first two elite series, after what you saw in the opens last year, do you think that there's maybe even a disadvantage now going into grand being intimately familiar with that body of water? Man, is that a fair question? I, it's such a fair question. And I look to say that there's not a home lake advantage. Like, yeah, there's a home lake curse, but there's definitely a home lake advantage. Yeah. This guy knows how to pull into a cove and fish one dock, one dock with that specific brush pile there and catch a four pounder. And that can be huge. So there is a hundred percent home lake advantage. And that could have been he could have posted that to throw you off. Oh, a he could have called posted, a red herring. Uh, he could have. That might be called a red herring. Let me yeah, look that up. He could be posting that as a sponsorship thing. Like you never know. Like I'm telling you, Jason Christie is going to catch him, and he is going to do a lot of his damage not on a spinning rod. A red herring is something that misleads or distracts from a relevant or important question. Mm -hmm. It may be either a logical fallacy or a literary device that leads readers or audiences towards a false conclusion. I'm going to say this. You will not see me throwing a minnow. Really? You will not. Do you think there will be guys that are throwing yep. minnows in this classic? Yep. You think there's guys whose game plan yep. going into Friday, day one of the classic, will be minnow, 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 minnow? They will have four minnows on the front of their boat. Demiki rigs, yep. mid-strolling, yep. whatever you want to call 100%. it. hundred percent. And I promise you, if, if, if I make day three, and I have a camera, and you see me with a minnow, I owe you a thousand bucks. Okay. You heard it here <laughs> first. No, and I will a, pay it. Not in the game plan. As long as the $100 bill, it, it has to get framed and put up there. One you of the 100s. Want, you want me to have some of your side money? That's not how that works. You don't want to have. Oh, no, I want it. Because I want it. Like, I'm telling you right now, I will not have a minnow. Okay. Yeah. And plus, if I make the top 10, I'm going to be so excited anyway. You want to make the top six. Top six. Sorry. If I make the top six, I'll be so excited. I won't worry about paying my debt to you. 
you want to make the top six. All right. Anything pertinent, uh, classic that you want to get in before we take our first break, and then we'll dive into what the first quarter of your uh, Elite Series season has been like? I think that's that's all I'm going to give. <laughs> all right. We are uh, in studio March 13th, 2024, with uh, Elite Series rookie Bassmaster Classic qualifier and Bassmaster Opens champion. Kyle Patrick will be back right after this. The new Puma STS has been redesigned from the ground up. With the angler, design, function, and performance in mind, nothing on this new offering was compromised, and the only thing carried over from the previous version is the name. Based on the soft touch series hull that started with the flagship Jaguar, this new model is nimble and performs incredibly well at all speeds with either a 250 or 300 horsepower engine. Featuring a new 96 inch wide body footprint, this hull measures out at 20 foot 7 inches in length. Industry-leading design coupled with tournament-winning performance. The Puma STS from BassCat. Feel the rush. Get the best patterns backed by tournament data. Start by finding the best 10% of your lake. Know exactly what to look for and what to throw. After that, you just put them in the boat. Try the Deep Dive app today. Get that beast right there. My Pro Guide batteries keep me going on those long tournament days and long practice days. Always plenty of juice, never fail. The best part about Pro Guide batteries, it's the people behind the company. They have over 40 years experience in the battery business, keeping all of us fishermen out on the water longer, catching more fish. Check them out at ProGuideBatteries.com. I'm the kind of guy that never leaves a house without a pocket knife, and Gamagatsu's come out with the EDC series of knives. EDC stands for everyday carry, so whether you're on the water or off, you can always have it with you. The best thing about it to me is that assisted open feature. With this D2 blade, you've got it right here at your fingertips. So if you can't find your scissors, you need to cut a knot, you need to cut your braid, you've always got it. Make sure you check it out. Never leave home without your Gamagatsu EDC knife. Born in Japan, using technology, innovation, and precision, Sunline produces the widest selection of fishing lines at the most technologically advanced line factory in the world. Manufactured at the strictest tolerances to produce victories at the highest levels of tournament bass fishing, from household names like Christie, Swindle, and Cruz, to young guns like Cook, Logan, New, and Welcher, they all trust Sunline to take them to the top of the leaderboard. Choose the line that will give you the strength to guarantee your confidence. Sunline. Yes. Fishing isn't just a hobby, it's an obsession. Whether it's blazing hot or bitterly cold, bright sunshine, raining or even snowing, someplace, somewhere, there's a fish that's ready to bite. And as the angler, you need baits that will catch the fish anywhere, anytime, no matter the conditions. From throwing top waters to cranking the depths, know the baits to throw. Choose Spro. Have you considered purchasing new electronics for your rig? The type of mounts you choose to protect your investment should be part of the decision-making process. No matter if you prefer one, two, or three graphs up front, Beatdown Outdoors has a solution for you. Adjustable, versatile, rigid, and made in the USA. What's your ultimate electronic setup? Check out the full selection of Beatdown Outdoors products by visiting beatdownoutdoors.com. All right, welcome back, BTL. On Wednesday, Kyle Patrick in studio. A little bit of a cool uh, inside look into a classic week. Uh, I mean, you don't get the opportunity to kind of sit down with the first-time classic guy uh, very often. I'd, I'd be interested, uh, after we kind of talked for half an hour about what you expected it to be like to uh, to jump back on after the classic, while it's kind of still fresh and after you've decompressed, yeah. and then talk about what you thought it would be like, what it was actually yeah. like, what you excelled at, what you struggled with. I mean, uh, hell, you might win the damn thing and then it'll be a, a little rough getting you on immediately afterwards. <laughs> but uh, I, I think that would be a cool kind of show after yeah. the classic to get you on to be 100%. like, this is what I thought driving down. This is what it was actually like. I have, so, I have a lot of time after. So if, if, if you right now, you have a lot of time. Yeah. after. Like you, if I win it, especially if it's on a minnow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be yeah. coming back here. You'll be coming back here, write me a check. I do know one of the cool things that they have at the Classic, and I think they still have it, is they have this thing called the decompression room. Have you ever heard of that? 
Is it like after you get on stage, you can so like... you get on stage, they do the deal, the confetti comes down, you do your lap with the American flag. It's like just go, go, go. My heart's then... gonna be literally visibly pumping. Yeah, out of so my that's desk. why they they have that. So then they have like a room with a couch and water and stuff, and your immediate family can go in there, and then they put you in there for 15 or 20 minutes to like chill out. Someone from Bass comes in, explains to you like what the next three or four hours is going to be like for you, what you're going to do. Oh and then they take you to the press conference afterwards. But it's literally called like the decompression room. So it's not just like straight from the stage to the to the podium for the Dude, interview. I couldn't have and you're just like geeked family. out. I couldn't have anyone in my family in there immediately what? after because they'd all be so excited. And I would I, I like I would need to be in there by myself, like locked in there like a child. Yeah. Okay, like <laughs> if I want the classic, that'd be insane. Uh, I mentioned how the rookies are doing this year. Uh, currently, two events into the Elite Series season. It's one of those deals where you know you have a couple events and you have the classic, then you get right back to it. You have seven rookies in the top fifteen. Uh, eight of the ten rookies, because you also have a Bass Nation champion in there. So eight of the ten rookies uh, are currently inside the projected Bassmaster Classic cut of the top 40 and all 10 of the rookies are in the top 50. First time in the history of the Elite Series since uh, its inception in 2006 that all 10 of the newcomers uh, really? and I'm I'm taking uh I'm taking the the uh switch in 2019 out of it when they just brought a bunch of guys yeah, over yeah. from yeah. from the flw tour out of it but qualifying rookies first time that's ever happened even remotely close like it was a big deal when Derek remitz won as a rookie it's a yeah. big deal when casey ashley won as a rookie on smith mountain uh it was a big deal when rookies qualified for the yeah. classic like literally every single rookie is in the top 50 right now all 10 including i think like three in the top five dude, yeah i mean dude i, I finished 21st and 9th my first two elite series events and i'm in 11th place in aoi i would probably be in like if it weren't for the rookies because well, you're a rookie you can't refer to them as a rookies you're right if, if it weren't for my peers i would probably be in like what fifth or fourth yeah and then there'd be a bunch of guys that were having yeah better seat does that surprise you do have you guys talked about that or did you guys expect to to come in i mean i know you talk with someone who, who are you who are you uh robert g is it no no, no wesley gore wesley gore yeah i get those two confused yeah yeah wesley gore like do you guys talk as is, is it just what you expect you've caught him you haven't not caught him or no, have man. you had a couple of moments where you're like dude we're like not only hanging we're thriving dude like if i were to say i expected that to come in i feel like that like if it were true, I would tell you that. But no, I mean, I dude, the elites is like they were on a pedestal. Uh, they are still yeah. on a pedestal for me. The Greg Hackney's, the Gerald Swindle, uh, everyone on the elite series. Right. They were to me like untouchable. Like they were like the gold standard. Right. Mm -hmm. So I always looked at them and it was daunting when I made the elites. Like I was excited, but I was like, holy smokes, like I'm about to compete against like my childhood heroes, mm -hmm. literally, right? And it's a weird feeling. So coming into it, I'm thinking to myself, I mean, man, I, I would just love to cut a check <laughs> in my, you know, one of the two even. Like, you know, I, I obviously wanted to do really well, mm -hmm. but I didn't, I didn't expect to be in the top 15 in AOI. I mean, that's, that's thriving yeah really thriving and to make a top 10 like it's not easy to do and you know i certainly didn't expect it you know um i i think i like i, I wrote an article about having imposter syndrome like i had a little bit of that going into the elite series so i might have been different maybe some other guy some other other of the rookies yeah. maybe expected it but i was like so in awe that i had made it that i was kind of like I couldn't expect to do well, right? Yeah. Like I, I wasn't in the mindset to do well because I was still shocked and like, you know, humbled that I had made the elite series. Um, that's for me personally, you know. I don't know if you've talked about this. You, you just go into it however deep you want, but it's. I've had a lot of conversations with people behind the scenes, and some of the vets have not been thrilled with the rookie class, like have not been overwhelmingly welcoming to them. I'll, I'll state it that way. Is that a fair statement? That is a fair statement. 
I'm conflicted on this. I don't know. I don't know it. What are your thoughts on that? What did you think it would be like with the veterans? And then, and like I said, I don't want to put you on the spot here or say anything no, bad, say but it. I'm, I'm I'll, surprised. I'll I'm all, I'm surprised, but then I'm also not surprised. And I'll tell you my thoughts on it after, but it, it hasn't been like a warm and fuzzy feeling no coming over to the elite series definitely not did you ex what did you expect and then what's kind of been the vibe like so like i said i mean they're all my like yeah so uh, you understand I'll say the this. history bill lowen came i i'm gonna tell you right now that dude's a good dude yeah he came up after fork like it kind of gave me goosebumps right he came up after i, I you know i made the top 10. Mm -hmm. he walked up to me and shook my hand and said good job mm -hmm. that's the only literally the only in my opinion like you know guy that you'd look up to right that came up to me and was like good job and shook my hand i have not gotten one like like well, i mean you know here and there like but in a time where we were getting a lot of scrutiny he walked up and he i think he shook every rook like that we're mm -hmm. in the top 10 he shook every one of our hands so i was like i messaged him on instagram i was like dude thank you like you know it's nice to get like you know like a good yeah. job dude like you know like does that create like an awkward feeling amongst the rookies because there's a lot of guys well i mean you've got trey mckinney who just goes out and catches fish and is it he's <laughs> he, he doesn't he's not incredibly versed in the deep history of of uh bass master lore yeah but the majority of you guys, like, I mean, I know, like, you guys eat, sleep, live, breathe this stuff. What did you expect it to be, to be like? You know, I didn't expect them to, like, you know, embrace me yeah. when I came in to try to take a check spot, right? Like, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not, like, you know, it's, it's dog, it's dog eat dog, right? Like, yeah. we're not out there, like, like, hey, buddy, like, let's Different go. than the Opens. Different than the Opens. It's a lot of money on the line. There's careers on the line, right? Because... Yeah you know there's a cut at the bottom you get cut right um but I, I guess i expected me personally i i i expected a little bit more i mean i don't want to go into detail um on certain things but like right off the bat man at toledo it was like boom hostile like hostility right mm -hmm. and i was i was taken back i mean i was like you know i I guess I, I see where they're coming from or where a certain few are coming from, but dang, like, you know, that's, that was harsh. I haven't really asked any other rookies. That could be a standard thing for the rookies coming in, but I don't ever remember it being discussed behind the scenes. Like, dang, like there's a lot of guys that are, do you think it's, why do you think it is? I'll just leave it at that. I'll, I I'll think just ask there's that a couple question. reasons. Okay. One, I think, let me preface by saying I I am a diehard Bass Master guy. Yeah, love everyone that works at Bass. I appreciate everything they do. I think there are certain gray area rules that a lot that actually make anglers dislike anglers. Right? There's a hostility because of there's some rules that I think on the open side, right, mm -hmm. lead for some guys coming into the elites right like if you're solidified into the elites in the opens you yes we'll say gray area straight up if you're if you know that you are in the elite series you can go ahead yep. and do whatever you want before you actually qualify for the elite series whatever you knowing want. that there's a very high likelihood that you will be on the elite series uh yeah the following year 100 percent, and it is legal Unfortunately, I couldn't take advantage of that. Yeah, no, I was, was about I was in for like your 11, damn life. 9, 10, but, and that would have been bad juju. Yeah, so you think that kind of started I think right, that, off the right off the bat. We because had, there were so many of the incoming class that were so dominant dude, in the open, they, they were, were like locked in. Dude, people were locked in after the St. Lawrence, pretty much, mm -hmm. right? Like needed, you know, needed to catch three bass on yeah. average a day bass right? fanatic says don't be vague i just told you exactly what the situation was with the hostility you had guys who went and and uh legally well, well this isn't this is for the elite well, series season before they qualified for the elite series betting on themselves is all they were doing right this isn't 
this this isn't for sure. Yeah. I'm talking, we're talking, this is why there was some hostility. Mm -hmm. Because I think sometimes you know how has, info goes around the right. fishing world. Exactly. One thing happens and five minutes later everyone knows about There's it. There's hostility there right off the bat because you know mm -hmm. they they're well, we can't get information on the schedule. Anyway. Um, and then I think the new technology just creates hostility because I mean, my I'm talking about my idols of the sport yeah. like you know gerald greg these guys are people that i look up to to like i hold them like here right yeah. like the highest you can get and they're upset with it so it's conflicting for me because i'm like these guys have been doing this longer than i was even a thought in my parents <laughs> mind like like my parents weren't even married okay and these guys and they're really upset so it's like is it me like and then we talked about this before we went live like and, and is it the rookies is it me like what why mm -hmm. is there you, you know think it would be there if you guys didn't have uh seven rookies in the top 15 in the angler of the year nope. right now that's for sure if we were all struggling because let's face it was there this much controversy last year uh, i don't remember it? in covering this since 2007 a year like that that's what I, i'm I, that's true, but I'm just saying, like, live scope wasn't a top. We didn't have people walking up on stage when, you know, Joey and Kiyoya and all that were dominating, right? Mm -hmm. And to talk about live scope. I, you know, I finished 80th, so I need to go home and get better at live scope, right? Yeah. Like, and I'm not saying 80th. I, I'm just, that was a random number. Yeah. Um, and, and so, I think, yeah, part of it has to do with the success that the rookies are having. Do you think they should be nicer to you? Or do you think, hey, you're at the top. These are the top guys in the freaking world. Like, I've earned my spot here and I it shouldn't be easy. I yep. fully expect them to be extremely competitive yep. and angry and saying, dude, we need to to freaking buckle up. And yep. dude, like, I mean, because I'm, I'm that look, way. Look. Like, if you go to the NHL, I highly doubt that everybody that you're Right. playing against is right. going to be like oh congratulations on making it to the show yeah, but no, they're they're hacking your laces yes slamming yes you, you know challenging Look, you to fights i'm not expecting to have the sweet you know embrace on the elite series um i guess there it could be like i think they're taking out a lot of anger on forward facing sonar on the rookie class that's that's what i think and then we already are there, there's already bias scopes under scrutiny like crazy right on, yeah we just had gene gillen in studio yesterday he's part of the uh tech tech committee for bass he kind of walked through all the steps that bass are taking and why mm -hmm. you're not hearing a lot about it right now and i i think it makes total sense yeah but look, I mean, I'm not expecting, but but it is a weird thing, right? When your idols are really upset and it's kind of pointed at you. Um, but now they're my peers and and competitors, like mm -hmm. fierce competitors, yeah. right? Like so. Um, no, I think that was just an eye opening thing, right? The first two events, like being around these guys, a lot of them, like you know, they're they're dude. I mean, I don't blame them, right? That's yeah. the thing. Like, I'm not complaining. This isn't me being like oh I no wish. you've been super super honest it's it's been i've i haven't even this is like a conversation i would have with you off air it yeah just, we just freaking went for it yeah i mean i take it as you will like yeah. i'm truly um you know i didn't expect i don't i don't even know what it what, you know i i just i just think um it's a new world like going from the open it's just it's a new thing maybe this is normal like you said maybe maybe it's literally cutthroat but i just felt like i would be a little more friendly you, you know what i mean just yeah. like a little more like after an open if i saw you get off the water i'd be like hey man how's it going you mm -hmm. know i walked past two anglers that i respect greatly okay um none that have been mentioned as mm -hmm. on it. and, and i kind of like walked over like i was gonna say hey like you know good job or whatever dude crickets and they were talking about live scope and how it's ruining the sport literally i could hear it and 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 that's fine right mm -hmm. but i i just felt like i kind of want to like i feel like i'm a friendly guy people may yeah. get thrown off by my energy a little bit sometimes but like i want to be able to you know be like hey you know just you know shoot the shoot the shit a little bit yeah right no that's fair um but you know it's the elite series man <laughs> it's it's cutthroat dude yeah. that's yeah can we talk a little bit about fishing i don't yes. want to like throw throw yes. I don't want to like divulge secrets, but uh, 
with what Williams is doing and you and a couple other guys. So uh, a, a lot of the focus has been on the Damiki rig, the spinning rods on historic power fisheries, Fork, Toledo Ben, Santee Cooper, and the BPT. But there's a lot of guys doing it with 20 pound string, a heavy rod, and a jig. Yeah. And you mentioned the jig. I know uh, Williams doesn't make any secrets about it. He throws the ugliest jig in the freaking world that I've ever seen. I mean, he's got that big freaking flapping hog on the back and the <laughs> round rubber on it and stuff. Dude, and, he's won you know. so much money on Dude, that. Is that in your what's the deal with the jig with the forward with the forward facing and what's the magic about the jig? Yeah, I'll tell you. Look, you know how the jig has been a staple, right? It's the, the beginning the jig, of time. The beginning of time. Yeah. And like the biggest fish, big fish eat the jig. Yeah. Right. That's always been a thing. Like, I'm gonna pick up the jig. Yeah. Because I want to catch a five kicker. pounder. Yeah. If Hackney's flipping a yeah, a, yeah. a beaver or a yeah. striking rodent and he needs goes to the hack attack jig. If a guy's one one seven, he drags yep. a big jig. Yep. Davy High with the mop jig yep. and the Carol. It's always Lee been with the classic. Jordan Lee with the classic. Come on, dude. Always like been a jig. It's been a jig. Okay. And now, dude, you can drag a jig past individual fish. You can drag a jig past the exact like before offshore you had to mark you know you have to mm -hmm. fish around dude you can drag the jig and cast the jig on their face right it's not easy i'm not making i'm not saying like it's yeah. easy right but you can be way more precise with a big jig and when they're you know the jig's really good without like when you're flipping docks or like, mm -hmm. you know, you're just fan casting randomly, not not looking at any electronics, mega 360, nothing. Right. It's really good when the when they're their bite. Um, I guess I'll call it surface area like their bite window when their bite window is big, like yep. when they're when they're ready to, you know, jump from the one end of the table to the other to eat something. That's when it's good. But, you know, when those fish have a bite window like this. It's the same thing now because you can target, literally put it that far from their face. Is it? Is it more? It's not suspended fish though. It's mm -mm. so the skill. This is where I struggle. The skill is identifying not the Easter eggs that are five foot under the surface that right. you cast to. The skill is identifying the fish that are on the bottom that yeah. look like the bottom or that are on the that look like structure a structure that you can't there. see. Yeah. And that's where this excels. Yeah, and and a lot of what I do on live scope, I'm not going to speak for Tyler, but I know he does a lot of this as well. Mm -hmm. Is, dude, you got to like, live scope's really good for structure. Yeah, identifying. Okay, look at that tree that's turned. There's, we talked about it uh, uh, last week um, on Straycast. Um, the the timbers like this, right? Yeah. And then there's one tree. It's over like this. You can't even see fish on it, but I can see with my live scope. Okay. I'm going to make five or six casts. There's, I don't see a fish, but I'm going to make five or six mm -hmm. casts where a fish might be. And a lot of times you see the structure, you cast your jig, it's falling. And then you can just watch literally out of nowhere, a fish you shoot mm -hmm. down and they'll, they'll, they won't eat it on the fall a lot of times. And then, what I do is I don't even look at my live scope anymore. That fish has locked on to my jig. So I just turn my face like this way and I just drag and that, maybe I'll shake a little drag and all of a sudden dunk. And you said the hook. Crack him. Right. So you just know, okay, there's either a fish behind it or my jig is in a really high percentage area. People that don't live scope a lot, they, th they have this misconceived you know, misperceived, I guess it would be mm -hmm. like that. Every fish that you catch using live scope is like sitting in the middle of the water column, just relaxed. And then, Oh, there's a bait. Let's just eat it. Like that's just never how it goes. That's rarely how it goes down. It might right? go and down you know that, that. <laughs> what it might go down that way today. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. I have heard just fair warning. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but on uh, you know pre highly pressured lakes right like for yeah, like yeah, that yeah. it doesn't go down like that all the time yeah um and, and so it's also a confidence thing like dude he locks that thing in his hand yeah tyler has 
he made the elites on a jig. Yeah. Period. Oh yeah. Well, where? Yeah. And now we've seen it. Yeah. He the just agility of a cat. <laughs> Peak and, male athleticism and the uh, and Peak. the utmost confidence in a in an ugly jig, dude. He's got it. You like know? this thing, the he's thing that gets with me it. with the jig is he's like there's no swimming or anything. He like it's just action. a bulky hunk of plastic with that with that little jig. Yeah, and he puts the least he puts a bait with the least amount of action possible. Yeah. Which which makes total sense. Yeah. I mean, David Dudley's talked about it when Holman uh, when Holman created the BFE and we went in and cut everything up. We wanted lease action. I mean, you talk about the yeah. minnow, you talk about a cinco, you talk about a beaver. Like the most effective baits over time are the ones that are have the least action. Well, think about it. When a a crayfish or a crawfish for my southern people when they when it falls, it's not like going crazy yeah. like that you know a lot of the times it's just like kind of drifting down and i think that's where and then you know it gets on the bottom and it pumps its tail a little bit and that's where where you saw tyler at fork he took his rod and he's going he's like shaking it almost yeah. like he's hanging a minnow almost or, or you know throwing a minnow but that's on the bottom um i i look i'm not giving away it's no deep, dark know. secret right now but he's live has done that pretty effectively right um that, that's what i mean like he's not that's not it's very clear you can watch him mm -hmm. um but a lot of it is he's really good at finding areas yeah that's what people don't realize too about live they're like oh you just put your trolling water down dude these guys are so good at finding specific areas that are holding giant fish that are on the bottom that no one can see like yeah. you put your live scope down you'd pan around you'd pick your trolling water up and you'd leave that, that's how coop won at uh in Tennessee yeah, on those yeah, smallmouth. Yeah, like everyone they, they were went hugged. out and everyone went out and, and me included. We went out to the scope the the scope in Demiki holes yep. and didn't see anything and made a couple casts and you didn't let your bait go all the way to the he bottom. He went out there and literally caught sixty a day. In, <laughs> interesting thing on Cherokee there. That was one of the first times. So uh two years ago, Tyler Williams and I like fished the same stuff every single tournament. And like really? it was like a running joke. Like I would see him everywhere. No way. So then at uh, Cherokee there, I had like four on the second day and we're fishing the exact same spot and he catches one and it doesn't help him and he throws it back and we're like within talking distance and I was like, damn, I've only got four. And he's like, oh, dude, you should have said something. He's like, get over here. He goes, I'll leave. He goes, I don't think there's anything here that'll help me. He's like, you can catch your limit right here and just like up and left. And I didn't even really know him that well. Oh, I thought, nice, that, I thought nice that was super solid of him. Oh, dude. That. Yeah. Here's the other thing. Uh, last thing I'll say about our class. Yeah. There is not one bad dude. Truly. Yeah. Like I have, I, I feel like I'm a decent judge of character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's just, I, I truly believe it. And every single one of the guys in our class would do like, if, if anyone on the elite series rolled up to me and was like, say like I, that situation, mm -hmm. I would do that for any single one of them. Literally. And maybe that's to a fault. Sometimes it can be to a fault. Yeah, no, I for, agree. For me, like I, I think sometimes I'm too nice, and and I think a lot of guys, dude, like we're we're all just good dudes that love to fish that want to have a good time, right? I, I do want to save you some grief here. So you mentioned Hackney and Swindle as the veterans. You weren't like labeling them out of guys who have been actually like no. Like, over, you were labeling them as the guys you held on yes. the highest standard. As the veterans. highest like, standard. They, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, dude. Gerald. I just a, want to clear. That, yeah, clear yeah. that up. Gerald's there. a friend of mine. Like yeah. I'm not like. Dude, he's yeah. both of them are solid dudes and I had just nothing know to how the internet works. Yeah, of course. I'm gonna get that clipped <laughs> and then and then they're gonna be like And then Hackney's gonna come up and be like, heard you got a problem with me. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, no, sir. No, sir. No, no, no. I, I'm what I was saying yeah. there was, you know, those two guys uh, who you hold on the highest highest standard, yeah. you know, and they and they, you know, obviously have, are are they're they're talking about how the game's changing yeah. with forward yeah. facing and, and yeah. You What's know. wild to me is so Rick takes Cody Huff under his wing, mm -hmm. goes out. Cody's all about technology and teaching Rick. I mean, the guy's fishing in his 50th year. I, I don't know what his plans are moving forward, but he's obviously in the second half of his career, I would imagine. <laughs> he's he's got to be. No, winding. it's impossible for him not to be. He's got to be winding <laughs> down. Uh, and he is more intrigued 
and more open to learning and expanding that than almost any guy out there. And that's always been the case with Rick too. Like I know, uh, I know back in the day, like he, he would jump in Rojas's boat and be like, yeah, teach me the frog. Yeah. Or he would jump in someone else's boat and be like, teach me the crank, that's, teach me this. Dude, that's and what like, I do. he's never stopped. He's never closed minded yep. to what it is. He's always been in the pursuit. Now, I mean, there was a six-year period where we only threw a square bill, but right. <laughs> other, than that, other than that, only. Yeah. Um, that was like also the year where he, he almost won Falcon. But. Yeah, I, I that is something that I um, can truthfully say that I, I I feel like has helped me over my career more than anything. Mm -hmm. Marshalling these, I marshaled these guys three years ago, right? Think about that. What's your best marshal story? Um. I was with Stetson Blaylock. Yep. And we were on the tennis. We were on, what was it? So it, it must have been, it's where Gussie won, uh, Tennessee River. Yeah. Yeah. And dude, it was raining in 34. And I did not dress appropriately. <laughs> I did not even come close. And I didn't want to be the guy that's like, dude, no, I have, fr dude, I have frostbite so badly. I got it on my hands. All like my whole toe was blue. And I was in the bottom of his boat hugging. Like I, I talked about it at Fork. I was hugging my knees in a ball in the bottom of his boat. Um, I don't really have anything <laughs> that <laughs> that like funny or crazy. I mean, obviously I've gone to the bathroom off their boats and uh, you know, that kind of stuff, but yeah, nothing crazy. All right, we're gonna take a final break. When we come back, we'll wrap things up with Kyle Patrick, and then we are headed uh headed to the water. BTL on a Wednesday. We'll be back after this. In 2023, we became a household name in the crappie fishing world thanks to Power Breaks the Game Changer. Hey, bass fishing world, buckle up, because <laughs> you're next. It's going to be fun. Welcome to the next evolution of our product line, Power Breaks Sidekick, designed to install right on your shallow water anchors. We are the first and only fishing break company to offer a breakaway system. Just like with the Game Changer, the Power Break Sidekick has it as well. And it's not a matter of if you're going to need it, it's when. Power Breaks, the most durable fishing breaks available on the market today. Made right here in the USA with our rock solid two year warranty. Hey, not all fishing breaks are built equally, and you owe it to yourself to find out why ours are different. Power Break Sidekick, order yours today at mypowerbreaks.com. You'll be glad you did. I'm the kind of guy that never leaves a house without a pocket knife, and Gamagatsu's come out with the EDC series of knives. EDC stands for everyday carry, so whether you're on the water or off, you can always have it with you. The best thing about it to me is that assisted open feature. With this D2 blade, you've got it right here at your fingertips, so if you can't find your scissors, you need to cut a knot, you need to cut your braid, you've always got it. Make sure you check it out. Never leave home without your Gamagatsu EDC knife. Born in Japan, using technology, innovation, and precision, Sunline produces the widest selection of fishing lines at the most technologically advanced line factory in the world. Manufactured at the strictest tolerances to produce victories at the highest levels of tournament yes, bass fishing. Sir. From household names like Christie, Swindle, and Cruz, to young guns like Cook, Logan, New, and Welcher, they all trust Sunline to take them to the top of the leaderboard. Choose the line that will give you the strength to guarantee your confidence. Sunline. All right, wrapping things up here on Wednesday with Kyle Patrick. What are you just going to hit a couple different lakes leading up to Friday just to get the Oklahoma vibe and then roll right into practice? Yeah, um, you know, I, we got that little derby today. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the one who thought of that. Now I'm thinking that might not have been such a great idea, but hell, it'll be fun. <laughs> it will be fun. Um, you know, and then I think I'm actually going to go to the I forget the high school. Um, with Jose from from Cast King, I'm gonna go to high school and do it, like uh, talk with them. Nice. Um, I think that's tonight or maybe tomorrow night. I'm not sure. And then, you know, I'll, I'll probably hit. I, I, you know, what I need to go out and what I really want to do is go to any lake. It doesn't matter which, and just, you know, I like to idle around, make sure my electronics are dialed in. I know it's only been like a week and a half, but I just like to get comfortable again rather than mm -hmm. like really fish. You know. Um, and then, you know, roll out day one, Friday. This is just proof that you can't, you'll never make bass fishing fans happy. There's, 
people out here they're talking about gerald the guy's won two angler of the freaking years yeah he's a, a hammer. decade apart yeah. like tell me anyone else who's been that Consistent. relevant for that long yeah unbelievable no like they gerald just to end this has been nothing but helpful to me yeah throughout my whole and career I've, I've seen on the post and stuff like that he's he gerald uh he's I'll, walking a f go ahead yeah no go ahead yeah he's intrigued by it yeah really intrigued by it i think where and the reason i brought up gerald and hackney for all the viewers is they are personally my pe people that i look up to right yeah. but also legends of the sport but still you know i'm not gonna say young but like not you know rick clun yeah. right so they they have time to adapt they're adapting to it they yeah. are but i think they're conflicted just because of you know um the way it's changing how you fish mm -hmm. because they are so good at you know flipping shallow flipping a jig um junk fishing throwing Backside a crankbait crank chatterbait bait, coming in with five uh, catching that fifth one in the last 20 minutes fifth on a one you get jacked up it's a three pounder river yeah you you weigh 16 and it's a giant bag right i mean dude look at this last open though you had a bunch of guys you had some guys that were fishing yeah yeah dude i we all got 90 percent of us got our butts kicked we we're like, looking at it dude, you just go and chuck and wind a freaking chatterbait and they've Hammer. slack line yeah every and, third and look cast. at the point shake up by the yeah, way yeah that was nice but <laughs> yeah um but yeah they you know i i just i think that they have a lot like i need to i want to hear them out i actually had i don't think hackney goes on instagram much but i just <laughs> <laughs> he's scrolling through the reels on yeah the no no so i dm'd him and i was like hey like because i i don't know him like i know gerald right yeah um i was i want to i want to pick your brain yeah i want i want to have you talk to me like angler to angler yeah. now like what is it like give me the give me everything yeah i want to know because as someone who has adopted it that used to fish the bank solely. That's yeah. all I did. That's all I cared about. I thought fishing out deep was stupid. I really did. Um, I want to know. I just didn't understand where the hell the cast. To be <laughs> right. <quite honest>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. God, there's a lot of options out here. Yeah. Um, and, and and I I said I I want uh, like mm -hmm. help me like I want you to tell me your thoughts on it because I I value everyone's opinion on the elites as you know people I look yeah. up to like I said so. I'm, I'm go in this year. I plan to walk up to Hackney and be like, talk to me about this. Like, I want to, I want to know where, where you're coming from. Maybe he won't even, maybe he won't do it. Off but, from a trade. Be like, <laughs> you show me where you're coming from and I'll show you where you can use where you're coming from, <laughs> yeah. from where I'm coming from. Yeah. And we can do a little yeah, yeah. collab there. But I, I, because I, like I said, I value these guys' opinions and I yeah. care about, they are what made the sport what it is. Listen, today. I'm a little old school. I'm not opposed to a little, a little intimidation, yeah. a little, a little rookie yeah. uncomfortableness. Like, I, like I, I feel like you should be uncomfortable. I feel like Dude, you should be slightly intimidated. 100%. I feel like they shouldn't be opening. You're coming in trying to take one of the hundred jobs that's in there and they've been there. They've done that. They've got the titles. Hackney's won every damn yep. thing except the Bassmaster Classic. And if you want to come in, you got to earn your freaking spot. 100%. Now dude, you're around I'm a little bit. You hang around a couple years. You impress them. Yep. Then you do it. But yeah, I mean. No, no. Look, I was in a fraternity in college. Okay. Yeah. I went through that process. Right. So I'm not. <laughs> I'm Are they not... one of the ones that's banned for three decades now? <laughs> dude. I am not someone that expects to walk into a new scene, right? Yeah. And I hope it didn't come across that way. No, it didn't. I, I ask you the question. Yeah. Like, I, I in fact, think it's good yeah. that we're getting a little scrutiny and, 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 and you know, um, it's not an easy transition because it shouldn't be. If you want to do this for a living, you got to be able to yeah. put, take the heat, right? You know, it, the highs are high and the lows are low. Like, you got to be able to, you know, take the heat and, you know, all that. I, so I wasn't, that's not where I'm coming from, but yeah, I, I, that's no, that it's all good. Leave that. I think we're clear. Yeah. Dude, I'm ready to catch a fish. You ready to go catch yes, a fish? I want to catch a seven plus. That's very possible. Uh, I've, I've heard Austin's talked to me about it. He said, it's now you're rolling with Austin though, right? Like, I don't you care. The, you're in his boat. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be, I'm going to play co-angler. 
apparently he has some technique um, that we can both do. Yeah, like it's a freaking way we fish the Thursday night. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta have a strategy session with Ledoux before we get done. Dude, yes. I greatly appreciate it. I appreciate yeah, the candor, the honesty. Uh congratulations on making the classic. Enjoy it, soak it all in. And uh hopefully we're watching you on Sunday and guys are like, man, know a little bit more behind the scenes about what's yeah. going on. So uh greatly appreciate you coming. Yeah, thanks in for having studio, me. On. Man. All right. Uh tomorrow we have a good show. Uh, day four with Frank Scalish. The guys from Great Lakes Finesse will be on. They'll be dropping a bunch of new stuff at the Classic. We're going to have them on. And then uh, Guide Day returns on Friday with Captain Ben Florentino. Uh, it's a really cool show about uh, the guy guides for Calico Bass out in Southern California on the coast. And there's like a bunch of cool videos. Like they literally punch kelp just like you holy like they go out and you punch the kelp just like you would hydrilla with like a three ounce like jig. in the middle of no it's like it's like yeah i mean it's like kind of bass fishing stuff and wow. you punch like the kelp beds and then it goes dunk and you're like crack oh. and then they eat swim baits they'll eat a spook all sorts of cool stuff wow. so that's coming on friday and then a full week of shows uh next week uh also kyle austin who just dominated the bassmaster open on santee cooper will be on monday the 18th 19th is pete robbins for a classic preview and then stay tuned to my social media and basszone.com for a schedule on where i will be and also frank will be for the bassmaster classic expo on friday saturday and sunday so we are headed to the lake thanks for everybody hit that like subscribe if you hadn't leave a, a review on itunes that helps out a lot as we uh, look forward to bringing you more BTL shows. That's all we got for today. We are out. See ya.